Hey there, this is Character Design Forge. I'm Brooks, I'm a professional character designer, and you are likely here because you're interested in character design. And, or you're a regular and you're here for the new upload. Hey, how's it going? How's your week been? Have you talked to Margaret lately? How's she been? You're probably interested in what it takes to be a character designer yourself, or you have a few characters that need to be designed for something you're working on. And character design can be a little bit complicated or daunting as a discipline because there are so many factors and pieces of it, as well as elements that really benefit and improve your character design. Is it just drawing? Is it just using the word shapes over and over? Feels like that sometimes. As a video, this is a little bit of a rapid fire overview. It might feel a little like step one, make your first million dollars, step two, hold on, wait a second, how do you make a million dollars? But a lot of these pieces are things we've gone in depth with on the channel before, and I'll provide some links and cards up in the corner for you as we go. This is, after all, a lifelong career if you want it to be, and there's a lot that can go into learning and improving at it. Also, I'll mention it again later, but I've actually made an 18-hour course called Learn Character Design at learncharacterdesign.com. If you're serious about it, it's got all the pieces you need in there. So a character designer is someone who can effectively communicate and draw an idea for use in a larger purpose. For most of those purposes, it's some form of storytelling, whether that means it's a comic, animation, film, game, or even some kind of mascot. In that case of mascots, it might not be as much a narratively driven character that goes through an arc, but an encapsulation of an organization or company's ideas, marketing, or values. Now, since character design is a mix of so many things, I like to simplify it down to three pillars, drawing, design, and story. Drawing is going to be the most efficient and versatile way to communicate a design, more so than say, cutting out shapes of paper or using topiary shears. People have argued this before, that you don't need to be able to draw to be a character designer, but that usually breaks down to that same argument of just being an idea man. You still need to hand the idea off to someone who is capable of executing it, and in practicality, ideas are vastly overrated. Like, you get the people you're handing it off to have their own ideas, right? Beyond that first pillar though, storytelling is hugely important because it informs the choices you make in the design, and overall it motivates why the design is made and what things to include. Character design fits under the larger umbrella of visual storytelling, alongside things like illustration and storyboarding. So whether it is just a story that you're telling within the singular design of a custom toy, or the main character of a larger epic that goes through changes along the way, you want to be able to convey certain things visually. And that brings us to the third pillar of design. And design is really all about communication. So usually the difference struck between art, as in traditional art from a gallery or museum or what have you, and design is that art is about expression, and design is about efficient communication. You don't want everyone to gather around a stop sign and say, Hmm, yeah, I think the artist was trying to convey a need to halt, to take a rest, to be conscious of other people and cars around you. No, you want them to, in a split second, recognize symbols that tell them something immediately. That's not to say that you can't have subtle or nuanced designs, but that it pays not to be obtuse. We get first impressions from characters almost immediately, and well-designed characters make us understand the things that the designer wanted us to immediately. That might mean that there's something hidden about them that subverts their visuals at some point, but that is also in itself good design. So there's tools and principles of design that help us as character designers too. So with those pillars in mind, how do you become a character designer, especially with so many things to learn and understand? Before you even start drawing, a really vital element is to study and observe other people. All character designs, because they are being made by humans for humans, inevitably reflect some amount of human qualities. And the best characters tend to remind us of something, either about ourselves or that we recognize in other people. We can make parallels and it ends up being really compelling storytelling. Yes, you can learn some from studying existing shows and games and other people's character designs, but the most authentic and powerful source is going to be from the people that you meet and know in real life or behaviors and quirks that are unique. So if you had a choice between binging a season of a show with good characters and interviewing someone about their life, 
the latter might be your best option for creating something new, compelling, and unique. Maybe you find yourself to be shy or it's difficult to be around other people, but observation isn't really as much about your actions as it is just making notes of things and mulling over what causes a man in his 50s to act like he's 15? Or what causes someone that's overwhelmed and busy to make lots of harsh and snap judgments? Or why someone that's been through terrible experiences cares so much about helping other people that have gone through the same? You can do this same thing through drawing. One of the best ways to hone your drawing and design skills is through what's called cafe sketching. It's been a little tough to do that over the last two years, but discreetly drawing the people that you see in public, maybe embellishing or choosing one quality of theirs to amplify over others, that's great character design. My friend Max Ulichny is incredible at this, and not only do the cafe sketches he makes look great, his character designs and illustrations carry this innate storytelling with people in them that contain these universal ideas that we understand and identify with. Being able to convey life in our character designs is one of the most effective ways to engage people and make them care about them. And part of that comes from the technical skills of drawing. Some people take this the wrong way, and they think that learning to draw really well, with the end goal being cute or simple cartoon or anime characters, means that learning to draw realistically is the way to go, doing charcoal studies and learning all the muscle names. Those two things are helpful supplements, but learning to draw is actually about fundamentals. See, with a charcoal still life, you are emulating realism. The thing that you're drawing is the light and shadow and everything in between. You're doing the same thing as an old-fashioned camera does, only observing light data, not looking below the surface. Realism is useful, but there are other forms of drawing, namely constructive and gestural drawing. These are two of our fundamentals. Construction, creating dimensional forms on our otherwise flat surface of the screen or paper, and gesture, conveying the energy, motion, and weight of something. We've got a really good series coming up on the channel that will dive into construction practically. Other fundamentals include perspective, human anatomy as a touchstone for good drawing, an understanding of value, how light and dark something is, and a strong and confident ability to create lines that we sometimes call draftsmanship. I like to say that ideas and designs are something that we want to say, and being able to draw them well gives us the right to say them, or effectively shout them through a megaphone so that a large amount of people can and want to hear them. With drawing and story firmly established, the how and why respectively, we get to use design in earnest. So just like observing humans can give more life and insight into your characters, a curiosity and observation of just about any subject can inform character design, whether that's a particular part of history, science, mythology, a culture, or region. The more you learn and pick up on, the more interesting perspectives and angles you can approach new designs from. A lot of times our designs are a remix of the experiences and observations that we've had filtered through our own mind and ability. One principle that's good to keep in mind throughout the process is purpose. Is this design intended to be a background character in an animated show? Are they the main character in a video game? Are they a threatening enemy minion in a video game? There's decisions you're going to make differently because of those questions. Here's a character of mine named Jacqueline for a game we're developing called Shackleton. Her purpose is to act as the player character in a game. Not to say you couldn't use her for something like an animated series, but the contrast between a fluffy character and a giant metal key makes it clear where her source of power is. If a game started and this is the character you're controlling, you likely assume that gameplay involves some use of this giant key along with some amount of the character's agile movement. With as few elements to the character as possible, we get clarity, another principle of character design. Like that stop sign, we're removing anything that could be ambiguous or obfuscating and leaving the important parts. It also means that if the character needs to be drawn over and over, we're not creating unnecessary work for ourselves. Another really important part of character design is something called abstraction. 
Now, where that stop sign painting or a Jackson Pollock painting looks like an esoteric explosion that makes it harder to understand what it is, abstraction in character design often means imploding towards simplicity. For example, a cartoon frog does not take on the realistic shape and features of a real frog. They're often just a few simple shapes and eyes that represent a frog. Both the limits of animation and good simplicity in practice make it so most of the most recognizable characters out there are simple shapes. A fairly important element of character design pertaining to those shapes is their silhouette, or the outline that a character makes without any inner detail. This might get a little oversold in some circles, but it's still helpful to understand something about the character proportionally, shape-wise, or in gesture, just from that outside read. Speaking of shapes, we love to talk about shape language as a principle of character design. And yes, circles, triangles, and squares are the very beginnings of this principle, but it's not just using only that basic shape, it's use of round, pointed, or squared off lines and shapes in designs, or where those shapes are distributed in a design. We have other videos for that, you can make sure to check that out. Proportion, exaggeration, contrast, use of color, these aren't just buzzwords, they're pieces of our tool set that can strengthen designs. I'll leave links to videos on those subjects as well since I know we're kind of already overloading in this video. So those are the pieces we need, you might be wondering how best to put these into practice. We have other videos if you're trying to make this a career, but one of the best ways to develop your character design skills is to create a personal project that requires character design. Whether it's a comic, a short animation, or even just an animatic, you can figure out not just the lore of some characters or writing about them in a paragraph, but actually put them into practice and tell a story with them. There's no better way to figure out if a character works or if they break under the pressure of one or of a few needs that you have for them. Like any artist or craftsman, a character designer benefits from constantly looking to improve their work and to learn new methods and avenues of their craft, either strengthening those drawing skills or finding deeper, more human insights on how to give life to their characters. And of course, it's a big enough topic that we talk about it every week here on Character Design Forge. Like I said before, I've created an 18-hour course that's a comprehensive character design curriculum over on learncharacterdesign.com. Even if you don't know how to draw, we take you through building up the skills in that pillar, as well as story and design. Every month over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen, I send you a new original package of original art containing a foil trading card and hard enamel pin in your mailbox. This month's looks like this. You can follow me and my art at bageldenizen on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. And of course, keep following along here on Character Design Forge. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.